The Motor Car Act of 1903 stated that from January the 1st, 1904, every motor vehicle would need a car registration number, with the first registration ever released being A1, that's A for Alpha, and the number one. As of today, I'm still waiting for a registration for my Cortina. Now, the Dave LA have been in contact. There's an appointment being arranged for a few days from now for them to come out and inspect the vehicle. Uh, they want to inspect it to make sure that their records are correct. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens when they get here to see uh, where we go from there but hopefully fingers crossed it won't be too much longer before i get a registration and then i can look at getting this out on the road and then join some fun with it in the meantime i've been doing one or two checks and making the most of the weather and see if there's anything i desperately need to take care of or if it's just little bits and pieces now i'm resisting the urge to work on the car until the dvla have been out inspected it and the issue with the registration but i have been doing one or two checks i've checked the coolant levels this morning and that's all up to where it should be pulled the dipstick in order to check this, the oil and uh, <laughs> the fun part was when I pulled the dipstick out the dipstick tube came out with it uh, it looks like the rubber o-ring has uh, perished due to being soaked in oil which seems to be running down from the rocker covers you know if you can see the the moisture in there uh, there's also some oil sitting on the intake so it looks like the shop list is going to start with a, a pair of rocker cover gaskets haven't checked the transmission fluid yet um, don't see the point in doing that until I get the car fired up again. It does run, it does drive, as you saw in the previous video. Uh, obviously, it's still scruffy around the engine bay. Haven't done anything with that. Like I say, I want to leave it completely as it was when it came into the country for when I get here to check everything out on it. And the other thing I've noticed is there's a crack in this indicator lens across there. It was right the way across, even at the, the chrome trim around the side of it. Uh, so that runs all the way through it. So new set of indicator lenses are going to be needed. However, with it being a pale blue car and being such a light colour, I'm not really keen on ginger caters. So I think I'm going to see if I can find a pair of clear indicator lenses, which should tidy the front end up a lot and make it look a lot more presentable when it's out and about on the road. Also, I've just noticed on camera there, looking at this, I don't know if that's, don't know if that's been painted or if it's just flaked off and the thing's gone black, but. Uh, we may change that and do something with that and uh, clean that up a little bit, make it look a bit more presentable. Yeah, it's definitely a, a plastic radiator grill and as such, being black, I'm not so keen on the uh, on the black radiator grill on a car with such a light colour and a chrome bumper. So I think we might take that off and, uh, and get that sprayed silver just to uh, clean up a little bit, make it look a bit better front end. I, I think on this particular car, being a light colour, the clear indicators and a silver radiator grill will clean it up and lift it a lot more at the front, make it look a lot better. That's that space, look at that. Need a registration there, desperately need a registration in there. There's only a few days to go though before they get here. Now according to the temperature gauge, it's about 20 degrees outside. Just jumped in the car and oh my God, is it hot. These vegan leather seats are so hot when the sun's on them. I feel it on the back, but I'm not changing them. I love them the way they are, other than repairing the damage to the, uh, the seat coverings. I'm just going to leave them exactly as they are. I do like them. They'll clean up and they'll sure look amazing when they're cleaned up. So I'll leave those as they are. The other thing I've noticed is the boot seal uh, seems to be perished in places. I think that's what's letting a little bit of water in there. Uh, not too concerned about it because we're not due to have any rain for at, at least the next several days or so. I have already got the boot seal to go in once the DVLA really have been out and, and they okay everything. I'll uh, I'll start fitting things. So I'll get the... Uh, the boot seal in as soon as I possibly can and I think that's pretty much it all I've discovered so far I still haven't had the ability of checking to see if the brake lights work uh, I know the tail lights do work they come on both the side lights and the tail lights and the headlights work the indicators don't as you saw in the last video so they need looking at but as I'm going to be changing the indicator lenses anyway I'll do that all in one go when I put the new lenses in other than that though um, everything seems to be okay I've, I have managed to source some tyres haven't got them yet but I've sourced some, some tyres to go on, so we're going to be okay with that. I'm leaving those wheels on, the uh, the TSW Omegas, they're staying on. I think they'll clean up really well. And also with them being a, a silver colour, they'll set off the um, the light colour of the car as well. Now as you can see, at least I hope you can tell, the uh, the glove box lid doesn't shut properly. Uh, something that needs working on, probably just needs a little bit of adjustment. And uh, most of all, there's no radio. Now, I don't really want to put a modern radio in. I don't want to go cutting these bits out and destroying the integrity of the uh, of the dashboard and the originality of the car. So I'm going to be on the lookout for a retro radio that has the uh, the two control 
knobs on either side that'll fit through there get that done and the other thing I was wondering about obviously it's the the gauges that are in here the the speedometer is only in kilometers now that's going to need changing to miles per hour or at least I want to change it to miles per hour uh, I'm assuming it's not just simply a case of putting a miles per hour, a miles per hour speedometer in in place of that one or a miles per hour gauge pack in instead of that one Am I right in assuming that I'll not only need to change the gauge, I'll also need to change the drive uh, so that it reads in miles as it's, uh, as it's running rather than reading in kilometres and just showing up as miles and being out of whack. Obviously the last thing I'd want to do is get caught speeding. Wouldn't condone that at all, no. There's also some wires hanging around. I've got no idea where they go from or where they, go to, where they come from rather and where they go to or what they're supposed to do. Uh, there's these, these ones here and there's a brown one here that's unplugged not connected to anything there's a couple down here on the floor that are just bare-ended uh, that doesn't seem to go anywhere at all and there's one hanging down under the dashboard there uh, so all manner of different things kicking about that's going to need investigated and traced back to see where they are but these are all little something and nothing jobs that can be done at any given time uh, the main thing for me at the moment is getting it registered and getting it on the road so I can enjoy this lovely weather we seem to be having at the moment. And I found that as well. Uh, it looks like it should have a bulb in it of some sort. It's uh, not sure if it's an aftermarket thing or if it's uh, something that came from Ford when it was put in. It's not something I've seen before on any cars. So if you know what that is... Right, well that's going to be it. For now guys, I just wanted to do a bit of an update, let you all know I hadn't forgotten about the Cortina. Still here, still waiting to get registered, still waiting to get worked on. Itching to get into it though, get it on the road and see so I can enjoy it for as much of this summer as I possibly can before I start doing any major work on it. Obviously it needs fully rust proof and all the rust needs taken care of, but that's by the by. That's just normal pots and uh, normal stuff to do on a Cortina. So if any of you know what that little blue thing is I've just seen on the dashboard, leave us a comment below. And uh, if anybody knows whether I need to change the final drive ratio on the uh, on the speed arm as well to get it to read properly in miles per hour instead of kilometers, leave us a comment below for, uh, as well. All this is new to me. Um, all the cars I normally import that you've seen sitting around in the drive, they're already in miles per hour. I've never converted from kilometers to miles. Leave us a comment below, guys, and uh, let us know what to do about that one. And I think that'll pretty much do it for this video. I just wanted to do a quick catch up, a little bit of a quick update on the car, let you know I hadn't forgotten about it. It hasn't disappeared off the face of the earth. It is going to be out and about as soon as possible once registrations are issued and a couple of minor things are done to make it fully roadworthy so we can, uh, we can enjoy the rest of the summer weather with it. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, give it a like. And if you want to see more updates on the Cortina and the rest of the fleet, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so YouTube can notify you of when the next video comes out. I'll leave a link up here to the previous video on the Cortina when I revealed it so you can see the main walk around if you haven't watched that one as yet. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.